Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Muley. Thank you so much for being with us today. We have a wonderful display of all the people working together to make Go Red such a wonderful event. And yet we've had a year like no other. And yet you guys came together and done so many wonderful things. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for promoting healthcare. Thank you for promoting cardiovascular health care, the care of the stroke and the heart patient. And thank you for promoting that to more women. During this year, we've done so many different things. We're going to celebrate all those wonderful things that you've done today. We're going to celebrate your life. We're going to celebrate everybody working so hard and for us giving, getting all these different awards. So thank you once again. Sit back, relax, and enjoy everything that we put together. Welcome back, and thanks for listening to all that we have to say. Thank you for doing all that you do. And why do we do things? Well, we do it for love. We do it for the people in our lives, for our children, our spouses, our significant others. We do it for our parents. We do it for everyone. And what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about improving cardiovascular health. Our goal has always been to improve the cardiovascular health of all Americans by 20%. And yet we're a little bit short, but we have reduced deaths a little bit. We have improved strokes a little bit, but you know, we're not where we, are, we wanna be. And so we need you and we need your help to get us there. Yes, things have changed. COVID has done so many different things for us. It's increased our blood clots. It's increased our strokes. It's increased our heart attacks. And you know what? It's affected all of us differently. It affects um, men and women, but it also affects different races, Blacks and Hispanics. And right here in our own community, Pacific Islanders and Native Hawaiians, they're affected more by what's going on. So we have to get that message out. We have to get that message out to everybody. And this is is where I need your help to improve the cardiovascular health. Help. Heart disease is still killing more women than the next four cases of death combined, including all forms of cancer. And we have those wonderful days where we talk about breast cancer and all the different types of cancer and brain cancer too. But you know, we have to start talking about and we have to keep it in the limelight and we have to keep it in front of everybody about cardiovascular disease both heart and brain, both heart attacks and strokes. And this is where, again, we need your help as well. It's a big deal. It's a big deal that you could help us prevent. It's also the most preventable catastrophic condition. It's the leading cause of all adult, adult disability. It's the fifth leading cause of, of um, death in the United States. And it happens quite frequently, about every 40 seconds. And you know, we can decrease the number of strokes that happen in the United States. But how do we do that? Well, we have to realize what a stroke is and time is brain. And when, when somebody's having a stroke, what do we have to do? Call 911, get the message out right away. Because for every one minute, every one minute that we wait, we lose almost 2 million neurons, almost 14 
billion connections and 7.5 miles of myelinated brain fibers. Whew, that's an awful lot. So what do you do? Call 911. Get that word out as fast as you can. So it's pretty darn expensive what, it, what happens when we have a stroke. Cardiovascular disease and stroke, it counts for a lot of the healthcare expenditures. And it happens more than any, its cost is more than any other diagnostic group. It costs somewhere around, holy cow, $316 billion. And by 10 years from now, it's gonna be almost a trillion dollars. So yeah, we have to take, we have to take heed of what's going on. We have to pay attention and we have to try to improve the conditions that lead to stroke because stroke kills more than twice as many women every year as breast cancer. And more women than men die from stroke. And women over the age of 30 who smoke and take high estrogen oral contraceptives have a 22 times risk than average of having a stroke. That's a lot. And that's something that we have to do something about. So how bad is a stroke? It's pretty bad. If you ask a bunch of people that had strokes, some say it's worse than death. How would they know? I'm not really sure, but uh, they might know. But other people it say it's just as bad as death. And some people say it's you know not so bad, but it is such a big thing. It's something that we have to really do something about. So can we make an impact? Yeah, we can make an impact. So you have strokes, you have little strokes. What does that mean if you have a little stroke? Well, that's called a transient ischemic attack. And what happens with that is temporarily have a decreased blood flow to your brain and it affects something. It affects your ability to speak and move and feel and smile and, and laugh and understand things. And, you know, it's a warning sign. It's something that we have to do something about. Because if you have a TIA, if you have a little stroke, your chance of having a bigger stroke, a myocardial infarction or a major stroke or even death is about 25% in the next 90 days. And your chance of having a stroke itself, just a stroke, nothing else, is 10%. So it's a big deal. So we have to do something about it. We have to take this seriously. So why do we do it? Why do we do what we do? Why do we do it? We do it for love. We do it for family. We do it for our friends. We do it for our, our spouses, our significant others. We do it for all those that are important in our life. That's what we do. We do it so other people could have that opportunity as well. And we need all of you to continue to do it. Well, how can we do it? We learned an awful lot. We learned about different articles that came out and say, what we have to do to increase cardiovascular health. And it's simple. It's life's simple seven things that you could do. First control, first, sorry, know your numbers, control your blood pressure, keep that blood pressure in the appropriate amounts as you see there on the screen. Do physical activity, it's really important. Every single day, get up, do it first thing in the morning, make it a habit every day for 30 days. And you know what? you're gonna feel so much better. The blood will flow to your brain much better. Your muscles will feel much better. Everything will be better. You'll eat less too. So get up and get active and do it during the day. And you know, we're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna show us some things that they're doing to get active right here at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center. But know the rest of your numbers. Get that cholesterol under control. It's really bad to have a cholesterol too high. It's bad for your heart. And it's real bad to have cholesterol too low as well. So keep it right in the right range. And eat right, eat that Mediterranean diet, eat fruits and vegetables, four to five components of fruits and vegetables every single day. And you know what? It tastes better, it really does. Get that weight under control, get your BMI under control. And how do you do that? Well, physical activity, getting your numbers under control, eating right. And it all goes together and it'll be really, really easy. And of course, if any of you guys are doing it, stop smoking right now. You know what? And if you did it, never start. And if you know someone that's smoking, stop them from smoking right now. You really need to do that. And get your blood glucose under control. How do you do that? Know your numbers, do exercise, eat the right food, and it'll all come together 
just that easy. Well, how can you do it? Get active, start moving. And in the next slide, you see, you might wanna click on this a little bit later on when you're sitting there watching it on your, by yourself and say, wow, how could I get active? But the other thing you could do is watch what we're doing right. We're gonna be doing right after this. So we are, are better, but we have to get even more better. We have to decrease the amount of smoking. And that e-cigarette is just as bad. We know that, but sometimes our children don't know that. And we gotta get the message out to them. Whether they're in grammar school or high school, yes, grammar school, grammar school, 5.3% of middle school children are using e-cigarettes. And maybe you thought, oh, that's just helping them do better in their grades. Or, hey, that's just cotton candy. Or, you know, that's French fries. Who would want French fries as, as an e-cigarette? But anyway, or who wants a watermelon? Absolutely. All those things are, wow, they're just having a, a break, just a piece of candy. No, it's not. It's an e-cigarette. The cigarette itself is bad. The, what they put in it is bad. It is just getting them hooked sooner. So let's get the word out. Let's stop them from doing that. Physical activity. Holy cow. Today, we're a little bit better than we were in 1998. 1998, that's like 20 years ago. We're a little bit better. And we have to make sure that that amount of activity starts in the grammar schools, in the middle schools, and in the high schools and colleges. Let's get that word out. Let's get our colleges all active, doing stuff, having those contests, going out. And well, you know, you can't go out right now, but you could do it at home. You could get very active at home. So let's get that physical activity even much better right now. And how do you do that 150 minutes a week? How do you do that 20 minutes a day? You get on the treadmill, you hit the old bag, you do something, you get up, you get moving. Anything like that is good for you. Every single day, you got to get active. And you got to eat right. You really do. Adults, what kind of, we're getting a little bit better, a little bit better, but you know, Children, what kind of healthy diet do they have? 0.6%. That's better than 0.2%. And adults, well, we're just a little bit better. We're almost, we're more than double that. Ooh, that's good. We're at zero point, we're at 1.5%. So whether it's nuts or fresh fruit, whole grains, decrease that sugar. Get rid of the, that sweetened beverages. Eat a Mediterranean style diet and eat nuts, go nuts. Eat oil, drink oil. No, that's not good for you. Olive oil. But if you're going to use oil, use olive oil. That, that works pretty good. So think of a diet as medicine. Well, you want to make sure you take the right medicine. Take the right diet. It's the same thing. It affects your heart. It affects your brain. It affects everything you do. So eat the right diet and you'll feel better. There's no doubt about that. And if you eat the right diet, what's going to happen? You're going to get a little bit smaller. It's not a bad thing to get a little bit smaller. You might bulk up a little bit, but at least you'll get rid of some of that weight. We don't want you to lose. We don't want you to gain all that weight. So eat the right food, get on that treadmill and get better because we don't want obesity to increase. And that's what's happened. Of course, many of us have gotten bigger and bigger and more obese and more, more obese. That's why I'm hiding under this coat. You can't see it, but it's, it's bigger. It's bigger. Yeah, that's for sure. So let's get that down. Let's eat right. Let's do that exercises. Let's get our numbers under control. Yeah, sometimes it's with diet and a lot of times it is, but sometimes you can't do anything else about it. It's what you were born with, whether it's your mother or father or both, or maybe both of them have uh, increased cholesterol. So know your numbers, get that LDL down, get that HDL up, take statins, it helps. Um, Watch for muscle cramps, watch for muscle problems, watch, watch for muscle tenderness, but get that, get that taken care of. And blood pressure, the silent killer. You know, our blood pressure, we're getting a little bit better with knowing our numbers, just a little bit, but still 80, almost 86 million of us have high blood pressure. 
and children, as they get more obese, our children are getting higher blood pressure. So we got to get that blood pressure down. We got to decrease the entire population's blood pressure by five points, five points. So increase your physical activity, eat those fruits and vegetables, decrease your sodium, um, decrease the amount of fat, but that's increasing your physical activity. Get your diabetes. Sometimes we can't do anything about it. And we have a lot of people that have diabetes. We got to get that under control as well, but exercise. So right now I'm going to wait. This is one of those pictures in, in the newspaper, right? I want everybody to stand up. Go ahead, stand up. I'm talking to you. Everybody stand up. Come on, you can do it. All right, get everything else around so you could do something. And let's do little exercises now, okay? Just for the next 15 minutes, really, really hard. We're gonna run, we're gonna run 15 minutes. We're gonna run three miles in 15 minutes. All right, everybody get ready. Okay, so we maybe don't have to run 15 minutes, but we could do other things. We could do some jumping jacks. Everybody, everybody do jumping jacks. Here we go. Back and forth, back and forth. You guys could do it. Keep it going. Keep it going. Don't stop. Don't stop. You guys are doing good. Okay, very good. Exercise. It's really important. Start off slow and work your way up. You could do it. Well, we want to get our cardiovascular disease under control and we want to decrease our, our death rate. Cardiovascular disease, we want to make sure that um, less people have it and more people are in control. So what do you do? We talked about some of those um, things that you could modify, whether it's knowing your numbers and getting your blood pressure under control, heart disease, get that under control, atrial fibrillation, make sure it's under control, either rate or rhythm, get your cholesterol down, get your blood sugar down and uh, stop smoking, stop using alcohol and uh, start doing physical activity because we're doing it for all the people and we should be doing it for ourselves because it's just as important. Yeah, we want to be there so our little ones grow up. We want to be there so we could take care of our, our family members. We want to be able to take care of all the patients in the hospital. We do it for all of them, but also do it for you because you are just as important. You are as important as everybody else who we're taking care of. So get it under control. Be there for a longer period of time. And you know, if we do that, if we, um, if we get our blood pressure under control and our cholesterol under control and stop using alcohol, we're gonna decrease the number of strokes. Look at these numbers that are on that table. We're gonna decrease, if we get our blood pressure under control, we're gonna decrease the number of strokes in one year by 370,000. Wow, that's an awful lot. Stop using tobacco and how much? That's like 92,000 less deaths in the United States. We could have a huge impact. Let's just get the word out. Let's get everybody to know our goal. Yeah, the goal was for 2020. And, you know, we got close, but we didn't make it. And we got to set a new goal. But it takes all of us working together. So learn about what this is. Get, get involved. Read the information. Get everybody together. Love yourself. Love your family. Love. That's really what makes, what makes it all happen. Do it for you. Do it for them, do it for all of us. Here's a good link you might wanna see. Get ready, go do it. Have fun with whatever you're doing. Send us your pictures and tell us why you do it. And we'll put them up, we'll put them up with this video. Go out and go dancing. That's what we're gonna do, that's what we're gonna see. I'm all ready to cut a rug, so come with me. We're gonna hear all about it. And then, you know, we're gonna see even something more special our Go Red Walk. It's fantastic. You gotta stay with us. You gotta watch this little bit. We're almost done with this whole thing. But in order to control it, we gotta know about it. And as we said before, 80% of all strokes, 80% of all strokes in your family, with your friends, in the hospital, with the neighbors, in all of society, 80% can be prevented. But you know, it takes you because only 30% of all Americans can identify only one warning sign of a stroke. Get out there, tell them what to do, tell them what to expect. If you have a problem with your face, your arms or your leg or your speech, what do you do? Call 911, get that information out. You could do it.
Thank you so much for being with us today. I hope you had a wonderful time, as much fun as I had. It was wonderful to hear about Go Red, about some of the things that tell us about cardiovascular disease and how we could help others. And to hear, to see the wonderful dancers and the wonderful um, Go Red Walk. That was fantastic to get those numbers out. And it's so number, it's so important to get those numbers out, know your own numbers. Change your lifestyle because you could do it. You run the house. It's up to you. Realize all the different things that's important to you and what happens if you're not there. So educate yourself, educate your family, educate society. Don't be silent anymore about what's going on because you can make the difference. Become a volunteer or an ambassador. Go out and tell others about what it means to go red for women and go red for everybody be a sponsor, recruit sponsors, and join us from our first um, Go Red Day that we did right here at Arrowhead to today. Help with fundraisers, get the word out, encourage the landmarks to go, go red, just like you saw in our opening, in our opening slide, attend the Go Red Women Luncheon. And here, we're all doing this for you. So thank you so much. Thank you for who you are. And thank you for helping us control stroke and cardiovascular disease in the inland.